Okay, in this tutorial we're just going to take a look at a s small tip for editing when using groups. And so, for instance, I have these three individual objects and maybe you want to add them all to the same group. It's just easier to select things at times that way. N normally, for me, a group might be a car with windshields and headlights and things like that. But in this case, I'm just going to put these three in there. So I'll select all three this way and I'm going to press Control G and that puts it in a group. You can see because it puts this green line around it. If I bring up the tool shelf here, though it comes up here, tool properties. It's a tool shelf or tool properties, I can't even remember. So it comes up with this new group, so I'm going to give it just three objects group. That would be the name of my group like this. All right. So that's its name. So then I get rid of is just select that. So then if I want to select the group, I can select any of the three objects. And then with with Shift G, I press that. And then I can go down here and I have this menu and I press that group. So it's in the group. I right, will so that's fine. So now I'm on the global axis. And let's maybe say I want to just move this object here. And I'll just I'll grab this arrow and I'll move it along. No big deal, right? So, but, but typically I like to work in local axis mode as you've seen before. So I'm going to switch over to local axis mode so I can see how things are oriented in here. So what I have in this case is, in this case it shows the orientation, but <coughs> the orientation not of the individual objects because the group is kind of overriding that. For instance, now if I click this individual object you can see it's local axis orientation. And that's local axis. See, it's not oriented in XY. This has got this regular orientation as a global axis. This one does not because it's been rotated on Z. So that's all fine. So let me go just grab the group one more time. And there's an, it's in the group like this. But now, if I, since the orientation, since, the, well, in this case, it's not looking at the orientation of this. It's looking at this because that was the one that I had selected. So let me do it th differently. Let's click this, then press Shift G and get the group. And now notice my local axis reflects the orientation of the object that I selected before I went and picked up the group. So that's important to know because if you're, if you're moving things, there's a couple ways to move things. So if I was just to press, you know, in this case, if I had it, well, I don't want to do that. I want to do, there's Y axis. Let me, let me do this again. Let me do Shift G. So if I just was to move it, if I wanted to move it on the local Y axis, right, and I was looking in global axis, say I was in global axis mode, looking at this, and if I do that, you're going to see what's going to happen. Well, that works like that in local axis mode, though you can see the they all change and they start all moving on their own local axis like this and then it messes up the arrangements of your objects within that group in the case like if it was a car and you had your windshields placed at a certain orientation like that or what you can do is just use G and you know maybe G Y instead and then, then move it along like that or X G X moves it along like that but really the point is it'll if if you've seen my cars if maybe I just happen to click the windshield of a car and it has its own orientation and then I pick up the whole group then the orientation is going to be based on that so it's just a it's just a small tidbit to be aware of because all well, those little tidbits matter alright well that's it for now I'll see you in the next lesson